Hi, it's me, JD, and welcome back to my channel. This is a video about bleeding tissue paper art. Now that sounds graphic, but trust me, it's not. It's tissue paper where if you put water on it, the color bleeds from it, hence the name. So I've got a few colors here and I'm just gonna play. Um, I've used this way, way, way in the past and I decided to use this in a video today to see if I can make some grown up crafts from it. I've used it with my kids before. After taping down some watercolor cardstock, I place the strips and then I spritz water over top and it's not blending as much as I'd like so I'm going to take a paintbrush and just help it along a little, apply some slight pressure to help hopefully get an ombre blend out of this. As I go to check on the progress, it's like not working. <laughs> so I try to spritz some more water on here, see if that helps it along some. I give it a fair amount of time and then it's still not working so I'm like hmm okay uh, what's going on so I, before I decide to scrap this part completely I decided to flip it over and so hopefully the color from the other side will bleed onto the watercolor cardstock which it does so I can salvage this piece thankfully I didn't want to toss it and that would look really really awkward since this is a video about bleeding tissue paper and it wouldn't bleed but now I've made it bleed I said bleed way too much. Okay, so I do the same with the other blue strip and then I'm going to do the same with the yellow strip in the middle. And, uh, oh, I dropped it. <laughs> Whoops, but that's okay. I kind of wanted to blend, right? I'm working with it here. I wanted the, you know, a little bit of green in between. I'm going to set this aside to dry while I experiment again. <laughs> so this time I'm going to take the watercolor cardstock tape it to my board of course so it doesn't um it doesn't buckle and then i'm gonna spritz water on it first i'm gonna get the paper soaked <laughs> uh, and then i'm going to put down the strips of the bleeding tissue paper this way i will get some more color down on the cardstock as it dries down, you'll see in that left corner that it does appear slightly lighter than the actual color of the tissue paper. Kind of like watercolor, but not really. Um, but I wanted some more pigment to this. So uh, I'm going to add some water on the tops of these strips as well and put some more pressure down with my paintbrush. I'm really pushing down with my paintbrush here because I want my colors to be vivid. Um, you know more so than traditional watercolors would be so I go to peel that blue piece up and there's color missing from the entire top half so I end up flipping it over anyway spritzing some more water on there applying much more pressure than before and yes I finally got some pigment on there and the red one actually was uh, worked out much better so I don't know what I did different there or perhaps it's the different colors of tissue paper that bleed better than others and bleeding tissue paper is somewhat of an affordable craft supply. You can find it online and it's, you know, it's a fun, messy art project. Uh, the yellow one turned out the best, by the way. I don't know if I, because I left it on the longest. By the way, did I mention that this was a messy craft? <laughs> because your fingers will show evidence that you were creating. <laughs> Okay, so now that the experimenting part is over, I know that when I tape down my watercolor cardstock, I gotta spritz this down first, you know, until it gets to a somewhat glossy finish, and then I will lay down my strips of bleeding tissue paper. Similar to the other ones, I'm gonna do this in ombre colors. I think it looks best when you do colors that are next to each other on the color wheel to help get that nice gradient. So now I'm using some smaller strips of bleeding tissue paper, but I'm putting more colors down. Same steps as before. I'm spritzing the water using a paintbrush to help smush this color down and really um, try to get that transfer of color onto my cardstock. I gave it some time to dry and I'll peel the whole piece up. And this turned out really well. I'm happy. I'm really happy with this one. Um, I really love like the blend of colors. It looks like I did it with a paintbrush and I really did it. <laughs> I just laid down some tissue paper and called it a day. So I'll just peel this up and let it dry while I work on the next project. 
Okay, here's where I went ham <laughs> with this bleeding tissue paper. I saw that the smaller strips worked better. I saw that the more strips you put on there, that was better than you know putting a one to three wide strips. So I figured I'm going to do that to do that for this card front. Just cut down lots of skinny strips, but lay down a bunch of them. So hopefully I can cover the entire or most of the uh, card front. And I'm using shades of blue, and I did this strategically because. Blue is probably the most forgiving color when it comes to crafting. Like even if there's not quite a gradient or that ombre effect you want it, you can always just slap down some more stripes of blue and call it an ocean. <laughs> you know, it's kind of easy. You can mask it with a die cut and still call it an ocean effect. As you saw, I was getting a little impatient, so I brought out the heat tool to help dry it and speed things up. And this definitely gives you a nice gradient, but I wanted to cover up my whole card front. So I, I'm trying to reuse the strips that I already uh, were wet and see if they'll bleed a little more for me. And I'm being very careful. It's like playing Operation here. Very, very careful. And it did work. I got some more color down towards the bottom of my card front. So yes, there is some second life to bleeding tissue paper even after you peel it off. For the top part though, I really wanted it to be saturated so I'm going to cut up some more strips and try to get some deeper, more vibrant color towards the top. Also, I should mention that this is not my first video on tissue paper. I have a few others on it. Um, I'm filming at a time where supplies are kind of out of scarcity, so I'm just using what I have to make the most of things. And this was definitely my craft supply. I have young kids. They like to do artsy crafty stuff, or I like to do artsy crafty stuff, and I just take them along for the ride. <laughs> and um, I wanted to see if I can use this in a way that makes really cool backgrounds for cards to give out and not just you know kids crafts I just love finding a good card making technique that works for me and the children and keeps us all occupied and all creative speaking of creative I had to get creative here with applying some dark blue onto this background I really really wanted that sapphire color that the tissue paper has on there but I'm trying to add it so it's not so choppy and stripy and it's it's not working i don't know what i'm doing wrong but it, the dark blue does not bleed well I, I tried a couple of times as you saw to get some more darker colors on there but it, it's not working so i'm just applying basically a whole nother layer of blues <laughs> to help uh, bring back that gradient that i originally had thankfully the pack that i had gives you like large sheets of this stuff like one to two sheets of each color so i have plenty to go around and to use some more uh this time i even tried wetting my paintbrush to help help uh blend these colors together oh and here's something i should have mentioned at the beginning protect your work surface because this will definitely stain you can wash it off your hands later but your work surface might not be as lucky all right, now to turn all of these backgrounds into cards. They are all dry now. I think I let them dry overnight. And I have this one die set, then I'm going to use it for all three cards. And now I'm giving this die set a second look because I didn't realize that the just because part only cuts out the letters. I thought it cut out like a frame for it. But uh, no worries, I'm going to start with the rectangular frame that it cuts out. I'll just put some liquid adhesive on the back of that and frame it onto my card front. While that is settling into place and drying, um, I'm going to pop out all the letters because I'm, I'm still undecided on what to do if I should just glue the letters on. But then I decided to just use the negative part because <laughs> I thought that looked really cool and modern and my background looked cool and modern. So I just trimmed that down with a paper trimmer. Then I could use the positive parts of the die cuts for another card. Like I said, I'm just going to trim this down so it looks a little bit cleaner and it'll fit on my card front better. I'll go back in with some more liquid adhesive and just stick this right on there. And now the die set has become what I wanted it to look like originally. In fact, I like this look so much, the you know, using the negative piece of this die set that I did it for the blue oceany card and gave that a modern feel as well. So now that my 
card fronts have sentiments on them. You can see I used the positive parts of that die cut on the rainbow card, the red, yellow, and blue card. And then I added some clear sequins and some clear drops of them just for a little, a little, some extra. <laughs> and now I'm going to put them all onto note cards. These are four and a, four and a quarter by five and a half inches, excuse me. For two of them, I put them on a different colored mat just, just to help frame it a little better. And now my cards are complete and I have a stack of Just Because cards to send just because. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.